And so you must understand that men are not there just to provide on the financial front, but they are also there to provide many other things. They are there to provide uh, the, the right knowledge and the information that is required because men ultimately, especially in a marital situation and in a family situation, they are called to lead. They are called to lead the household. So if I'm going to lead the household effectively, that means we need people in the house that have enough respect for a man to listen to his opinions, to listen to his thoughts, to listen to what he has to say, and to give him the respect that if we can't decide on what we're going to do, at least give me the respect to make the final decision. That's what you do when it comes to leading. See how quiet again it got in here? Amen. I'm talking about real fathering because real men will stand up and make a decision when you can't make up your mind. Are you listening to me? And they're supposed to. They're supposed to. The buck stops with me as the head of the house, as the head of the family, as the father in the house. And now women are decapitating men and men are losing the authority in the house. They are castrating them. They are taking their manliness. They are taking their authority. Oh, yes, I'm going to break it down here in a moment because men are acting like women and women are acting like men. And there's so much confusion that, that we don't know who's leading. We don't know who's making final decisions. And the Bible makes it clear that the man is the head of the woman as Christ is the head of the man. That's what your Bible says. Check it out in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm in the Bible. I'm speaking from the word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Christ is the head of the man and man is the head of the woman. Not every woman. He's talking about marital relationships. But God wants you to understand that a man is there to provide leadership. He's there to provide leadership to, to some degree to point the way that we're that maybe we should go here. What do you think about this over there? That this is I, this is what I believe God is saying to us as a family. As uh, this is what God is communicating to me regarding our son, our our daughter. That that there has to be communication, and and the man is called to provide leadership in the house. That he is there to help instill vision regarding your family. Am I helping anybody? He is there to instill vision. And what he needs is people that will come along, the wife, the children, to get in, in agreement with that vision and, and let the Holy Spirit use the whole house for the glory of God. The problem now in our houses is we've got too many visions. We've got too many visions. You, anywhere where there is more than one vision, you've got division. Division. And when there's division, families die. Yeah, yeah, you go through divorce. Yeah, there's heartache, there's pain, there's confusion. Chaos begins to break loose in the house because you have broken the divine order of God because men, real men, real fathers, have been called to lead the house. And I want you to look at a man in here and tell them you are a leader. Yeah, you are a leader. You are a leader. And if you're not leading, you're going to learn to lead. You're going to learn to lead. And if you're a strong woman, and thank God for some strong women, but if you're a strong woman, sometimes you ought to say to the man, you make the decision. I'm tired of making decisions. You make the decision this time. Help him to lead. Does that make sense? Because sometimes men just won't lead. And how can you complain about not having leadership responsibility and leadership capacity when you won't lead? And in many cases, the woman has to lead because you won't say anything. Oh, God, you won't say anything just like Adam didn't say anything. When Eve ate of the forbidden fruit, Adam should have stood up and said something to Eve and said, look, this is not the commandment of God. This is not the order of God. But instead of him standing up and being the leader that God called him to be, he ate of the forbidden fruit as well. Without an argument, without a debate, and all of humanity fell into the condition or the state of sin because a man wouldn't lead. Y'all better hear me in here. So I'm here to provide leadership. I'm here to instill vision in this place. I'm here to provide leadership for this house. There's a man in this house. Do you hear what I'm saying? Come on, man. There's a man in this house. Devil, you're not going to come in here and take over. There's a man in this house. You're not going to do what you want to do and say what you want to say. I, there's a man of God in this house, 
and I'm here to provide leadership. You should be calling the wife and children into prayer. You should be bringing them to church. You should be leading the house in spiritual uh, connectivity with God. You should be leading the Bible study. You should be leading the time where you begin to have devotion with your household, with your family. We have got to stop letting the women take over everything because we won't lead. I'm here to provide leadership. Does that make sense? Here to provide leadership. And sometimes as a man, you have to learn how to lead. And that's okay because you may not be born to lead. Uh, and it's okay. You need to put yourself in environments where you learn leadership principles, leadership uh, concepts so that you might be more effective. Amen. Amen. 